Managing resources with Resource Manager. This particular nugget is not going to have a lot of heavy emphasis on the CCA exam, but this is useful information for you to know because Resource Manager is a critical component of Citrix. So what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about the Resource Manager Summary Database, how to create one, how to, to best administer one on your SQL or your Oracle database. We'll talk about how to enable real-time monitoring so you can see what's going on on your servers in real time. We'll create some historical reports, which will say over a period of time, how has our presentation servers been performing? Well, we'll talk about billing reports, which are a way that we can take usage information for our particular Citrix servers and, and turn that into a report that we can use to back bill certain organizations within our environment if we're a, an ASP model organization. We'll talk about alerting, how we can set up alerts so that when servers get, uh, get a little crazy, we can turn on alerts and let us know when something's going wrong. There's also some components of Resource Manager inside the Access Suite console, and we'll talk about those too. That's Report Center, and then also some dashboards that'll give us some heads-up displays of what's going on in our Citrix farm. And then lastly, we'll talk for just a minute about that database and how we can calculate what the estimated size of that database is going to be so that we can prepare for it accordingly. So the first thing let's do is take a look at Resource Manager, actually. I've moved here back to my Citrix Management Console that we've looked at so far over the past few nuggets, and now I've clicked on the Resource Manager tab here. You'll see that there's not a lot to see originally because we don't have a lot of settings configured. It's, it's relatively unconfigured at this point. I have the Watcher, which will tell me if there's any alarms that appear because a particular uh, Citrix server has uh, you know, too much processor use or too much memory use. I can configure reports. None of these I can actually configure right now because we haven't set up a, a summary database. We're going to do that shortly. This is the billing tab where I can create fee profiles and cost centers. And this is the summary database. It is possible to use Resource Manager without a summary database, but without a summary database, we don't have the ability of taking our data and storing it for long-term purposes so that we can go back and give historical information or go back and get historical reports on what's going on in our Citrix server. A summary database needs to be either a SQL server or an Oracle database that's on a server that's not a Citrix server. It's, uh, it's, it's going to be a separate database server that will house that database for us. Let me show you a, a graphic here to, to, to explain what the different components are inside of Resource Manager. Resource Manager, once fully configured, actually has a number of different parts that have to work together in unison for you to be able to get both the real time and the historical data. You'll see here there's a number of different Citrix servers in this graphic. I have these three Citrix servers here, and I have a fourth that's been identified as the Farm Metrics server. Each of these Citrix servers has two different types of data that it collects. There are farm-wide metrics and server-specific metrics. These farm-wide metrics are actually kind of these arrows that come off the top here and move to the farm metric server. Now this is sort of a continual update of information from the Citrix server to the farm metric server. The server-specific metrics, however, are updated about once an hour. And there's a little file on, the, uh, on each Citrix server in the program file, Citrix, Citrix resource manager, summary files folder. This, there's a file in this folder that is updated every hour and is pushed to this database connection server also about once an hour. The database connection server stores these files for use for that particular day's metrics. And then about once a day, this database connection server pushes that information to its SQL database. So this external database is going to have lots of this additional information over time for historical purposes, but that day's information can be, be viewed up to the hour on the database connection server. You'll want to set a, a relatively low used server as your database connection server. Same thing with this farm metric server here. If you have Citrix servers that are in different zones, then it's actually the zone data collector that will, that will proxy the information from each Citrix server in its zone to the farm metric server. Now this is done specifically so that no particular server gets overloaded with this resource management duties. But this is the process that happens for each piece of information as it goes through. Now, Farm Metric Server additionally has about a once an hour update where it goes through and updates the database connection server with all the information that it's received, the farm wide metrics that it has received um, to update the database connection server as well. So each one of these servers spreads out the load and the database connection server is where most of the information is stored at any particular time.
Now the first thing we're going to do is actually configure this database connection server. I've already configured a SQL database to be able to accept data from us, but in order to configure this database connection server, we first have to create an ODBC connection so it knows how to get to the SQL database. Now let's minimize this and minimize this, and we're going to go to Start, Programs, Administrative Tools, and ODBC. This is where we'll actually create a system DSN to connect to that database. I click Add, and the type of database connection I want, because this is a SQL Server, is SQL Server. I need to give the name of this database specifically RM Summary Database. This has to be the name of this DSN, or Resource Manager will not be able to use the DSN. Now, for my purposes, I've used a SQL Server DC Nugget. Obviously, you probably don't want to uh, uh, put your SQL Server on your domain controller, but we have limited resources here. So this is the server that is my SQL Server. I click Next. I'm using uh, SQL Server authentication. I'm using the SA password, also not a very good idea in a production sense, but it's good for just so we can show you how you would connect to this database. Similarly, Windows NT authentication is an acceptable alternative. Click Next. We then change the default database to the database that we created. This is this RM summary database that I created on uh, the SQL Server. Click Next again, and leave all the settings here the same, and click Finish. We get the option to test the data source, and if the test completes successfully, then we have a happy connection to our SQL database. So now, going back to our picture, we've configured this connection here. But we have, we're only about half done. We still have another connection to configure before we can actually turn on this database for use. I'm going to go ahead and close down ODBC because this system uh, DSN is now configured and go back into the CMC. Inside the CMC, if I click on the Summary Database tab, you'll see this Configure button here. Let's click on that now. We need to create a connection to the database connection server. We need to identify which server we want to use. If we click here, we can choose one of the two servers that are available. I'm going to choose CTX Nugget 1. And I'm going to use the user, and excuse me, the user SA, and I'm going to use the password. We can click Test, and we'll see that both the server is up, the database software is OK, we have a DSN, and the database is successful. Now we can actually enable the summary database. It says, warning, you're about to turn on summary database functionality, and that now all the resource manager servers will begin to collect information. This is, actually begins the process of data collection. You'll notice that once we have the database connection server configured, the, uh, the blue checkbox turns into a green checkbox here, and now it's awaiting the next scheduled update. This little pause symbol here means that it's waiting on something to occur. Now, we haven't actually attempted an update yet, but we're going to do this right now. You'll see how this Update Now button down here. If I click the Update Now button, it actually completes an update from my Citrix servers and, and, and adds that into the summary database that's on this, uh, that's on this server. You'll see now that that checkbox down at the bottom that says all updates over the last 24-hour cycle since the last update now have been successful. And I'm, again, waiting the next scheduled update. The next thing we want to configure is our farm metric server. Again, if I go back to my graphic here, we've now configured the database connection server, which is the server that stores all the files in preparation for sending them to the database once a day. But we also have to configure this farm metric server, which, is, which houses the farm-specific data for each Citrix farm. Now, you'll see that I have the summary database tab here. Over here is the farm metric server tab. By default, the farm metric server is up and running, and it's con they, a, a farm metric server is chosen automatically when you install Resource Manager. If you want to change your farm metric servers, you can do so by clicking this button, and you can choose what you want your primary or your backup farm metric server to be. Once those are chosen correctly, then you can begin to view some data as far as what the resource utilization is going on in your servers. First, let's talk real-time data. You'll see here I have this watcher. This Watcher tab shows me any time that an alert goes from green to yellow or from green to red. If I go to my Citrix servers and I go to the Resource Manager tab, you'll see I have some default objects that are automatically created for each server. We have you know, bytes total per second for the, 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 the interface. We have logical disks for the, the C drive of that server. We have memory and page file and system and processor. If I want to view Real-time data as far as uh, processor, for example, you'll see that the interrupt time for this processor has gone to yellow, which is warning me. If I want to go click on that and right-click, I can choose real-time graph, and it will show me what's going on. Well, 
why am I having such interrupt time? What exactly is the process that's occurring? Now you'll see that I have a graph here that goes back uh, a few hours, and now you'll see there's some advance advancing going on in terms of how much inter time, interrupt time is currently being used by that processor. This graph will update from time to time to show additional data. I can use this information to find out when problems are occurring on my system. If for example, that, uh, uh, that, that interrupt time is causing some problems, I will be able to know by looking at that graph that something's wrong or perhaps when that problem occurred. Now, we're looking at real-time data here, so we're just seeing what's available on this individual server. Again, going back to the Resource Manager tab, if that interrupt time would turn to yellow again, you would actually see it appear here under Status and Alarm, and we get an idea of all of the alarms that are going on on all of the servers inside of my farm. Let's say I'm not necessarily interested in real-time data or graphs. I want to actually pull a report that uh, perhaps my manager is interested in the report of what's going on on my servers. If I click on this Reports tab that we showed a while ago, we have the option of re pulling real-time reports from the local database, or we can pull reports from the summary database. This is the local database that the last 24 hours. This is the summary database that's back into my SQL database. If I want to pull the current processes on this server, server, I can click Current Process and choose the server that I'm interested in. In this case, let's say CTX Nugget 1. I can display CPU, memory, I can display times, I can choose which user, for example, maybe using those processes, or I can focus on a particular process. If I click the Generate button, it's actually going to generate for me a report that I could potentially print out that will say what are the processes currently running on this server, CTX Nugget 1. What's the date of them? What version of that process? When did it start? How active is it? And who was the user? I can scroll down and get some CPU and memory utilization information. All of these are the CAN reports created for me by presentations or by a resource manager. If I'm not interested in the current processes of what's been going on in the last 24 hours, I can click down here on the, those from the summary database. Let's say I'm interested in process summary over a period of time. This brings up the process summary window, where I can also again choose CTX Nugget 1, but I can say, okay, I'm not just interested in those that have happened recently. I want to say, I want to go over a selected period. Maybe over the last week, I want to see what processes are being used over the last week. Now, why is this handy to you? This is handy because you can see what applications are being used, what, what processes are being used on your server. It can help you to, to better judge when additional servers might need to be brought online, when you need to add additional resources to servers, or when perhaps that you have processes or applications on your servers that are not being used that you may no longer need to make available to your users. Now, if you're an ASP model, if you're providing Citrix services to people and, and back billing them for the use of those Citrix servers, let's take these reports and take them one step further. Let's click on the Billing tab here. And this is kind of a neat feature of Resource Manager. We can actually create uh, reports that will say for how long people are using our Citrix resources. We can actually bill them for that. Well, it's done by configuring both fee profiles and cost centers. Let's do this first. Let's configure fee profile. Creating a fee profile, I'm going to say my fee profile, is a way of establishing how I'm charging my users for their use of my Citrix server. I'm going to say Citrix system settings here for the currency symbol, or I could actually choose a currency symbol if I wanted to. This, the system settings are currently set for the dollar figure. And then I can charge, back charge my users based on the amount of time per hour they spend, or perhaps how much CPU cycles they use, or how much memory they use, or how long they're actually using a particular process. Let's say I'm going to charge them four bucks an hour for use of my Citrix server. So I'll choose session time, four dollars per hour. This is to say every time that they're actually making use of a Citrix session, they're going to get charged four dollars an hour for use of that Citrix session. I click finish and the fee profile is created. Now, in order to, to associate that fee profile with users, I need to create a new cost center. If I click on cost center and click new, you'll see here's a new cost center name. I'll choose the default. And now I can choose which users should be associated with that cost center. Let's say under users I'm interested in, all the domain admins are going to get charged four bucks an hour for my Citrix server because those guys, you know, they just love, they just think they own the world. And so I'm going to charge them every time they try to use my Citrix server. I click next and I say, okay, those domain admins need to be associated with the fee profile. When I click finish, that is now linked 
between this cost center and the, the, the domain admins in that cost center and this fee profile. Now, we can let this run for a period of time, and as the domain admins log in and out of the system, they're actually going to start incurring fees associated with using this Citrix server. So at some point, we can generate a billing report by cost center that says, okay, you know what? For this cost center, over the last particular period of time, let's say over the last month, let's go ahead and generate a report. And similar to the report that we saw before, we're going to see that wait a minute, our domain admins haven't been billed anything. They must be screwing around with the system again. But if you have a lot of users on here and you want to be able to back bill them for use of your systems, you can do that with this billing tab. So let's take a look at what we are in, uh, in relation to the things we want to cover today. We've talked about the summary database. We've talked about real-time monitoring and creating historical reports. And we've even created some of those fancy billing reports. Now we want to talk about alerting and how you can use Resource Manager to alert you when things go wrong. You should see three more tabs up here for SMS, SNMP, and email. This is not the SMS like Systems Management Server, but this is the SMS like short messaging system for creating um, um, short messages that you would send to a cell phone. In order to do this, you actually have to have a, a, a TAPI server or a, or a modem connected to your, your system so you can actually dial out to send this SMS service. Now, we don't actually have a modem connected into this server now, so I can't show you what it is. But if you connect a modem in, you can create these SMS messages so that when alerts occur, you can, you can um, have it send you a message to your SMS device. Same thing with SNMP. SNMP is currently not configured. Let's go ahead and configure that now. In order to send an SNMP trap, you actually have to have the SNMP client service enabled on the system. If I click on start and run and go to the services console, and I look for the SNMP service in my list of services, you'll see that I currently have it disabled. If I go in and re-enable the service, I'll actually be able to send SNMP traps. Now you'll notice here that this service has a couple of extra tabs that most services don't have. There's the agent service, which allows me to list a contact, myself, and a location. Well, we'll say the location's here. Traps are important as this allows you to configure a community name. This is something that your SNMP administrator is going to give you. A community name is like a password for SNMP. It says, okay, if I'm going to be able to send or receive this SNMP data, I have to be a member of the same community. So I might have some kind of password, um, P at S S W O R D, that is an accepted community name that this system is a member of. When I click the Add to List, you'll see now it's a member of the drop-down list. When I'm done, I click OK. Now SNMP is available. Now what's important to note is that you're probably going to have an SNMP administrator in your environment. Or if you happen to be the SNMP administrator, you're going to need to set up an, a third-party SNMP tool that will receive the traps and do something with it, whether that's an HP OpenView or a Nagios or, or any kind of tool that can accept these SNMP traps. Now, this, that SNMP service, is, the, the SNMP server has nothing to do with Citrix whatsoever. It is a service that accepts SNMP traps from all across your network. Once you're done with that, you want to click this edit button here and enable the same community string for your Citrix servers, P at S S W O R D. Once that's ready to go, then this server, once it gets something that is trappable, once it gets an alert, it will then forward that alert onto your SNMP server using this community string. Well, not all shops have an SNMP infrastructure, but nearly all shops have an email infrastructure. We can actually configure similar to an SNMP trap when something goes wrong. We can have our Citrix servers email us to let us know that something has gone wrong. Here's the configuration for email. There are two types of configuration. There's MAPI and there's SMTP. When you think MAPI, think like Microsoft Exchange. With Microsoft Exchange, you have to create a profile. And then in that profile, you can actually send messages through that profile. If I click the Add button here, I can say, OK, I might have an Outlook profile on CTX Nugget 1. And then I need to go and edit that profile. I'll say it's my profile, and the user ID is administrator, and there's my password. I don't actually have an Outlook profile on CTX Nugget 1, so I can't show you what it looks like. But this is how you would connect to an Outlook server, an Exchange server, to send that message. Then I can click the Edit Recipients here and say, OK, well, I want to send that to administrators at cptnuggets.com. I want all the administrators to know when something's gone wrong with my Citrix servers. That allows me to connect my Citrix farm, my resource manager, up to an Exchange server. 
But what if you don't have an Exchange server? What if you just have a basic SMTP server out there somewhere that's allowing you to relay mail? In that case, if we right-click on Resource Manager and choose the Properties tab, we can say, okay, we're not interested in using Mappy, we're going to use SMTP. If you're used to popping your mail, this is uh, the, the way that uh, you would actually send the mail. What pop is the idea of pulling a ma your mail in, SMTP is the idea of sending your mail out. In this case, it's actually a little easier. We click the Edit Configuration button here and we put in our server name or IP address. Let's say it's mail.cbtnuggets.com and the uh, default port number for SMTP is 25. If we have to use a username and password to authenticate, if the, this particular mail server does not allow unauthenticated relay, which by the way is a really good idea, then we would enter in our username and password here. If we do allow unauthenticated relay, then we don't have to. We can use SSL to send those email alerts if we want, so they're secured. And that's it. We've, we're now pointing to that mail server to send out mail whenever a problem occurs. We do need to edit the recipients, same as before. We want to send it to administrators at cbtnuggets.com. And that will say, okay, we want to send it to these people. If you want to give it a from address, then we can spoof a from address. We can say it's from the bad Citrix servers at cbtnuggets.com. And so anytime that we receive our email, we'll get it from that location. So those are the three ways that we can alert ourselves whenever we have problems with our Citrix servers, either using SMS, using SNMP, or using email. Let me go back to my Citrix server itself here, and we'll go up to the Resource Manager tab. These are the default evaluators, the, the default counters that are installed whenever we want to, whenever we first install MetaFrame. But what if we want to create new counters? Maybe these aren't interesting enough for us, or we want to know more information about what's going on. If we right-click inside this location and choose Add or Remove Metrics, we can create new metrics. Uh, any, pretty much any metric that's part of a Windows Perfmon data can be created as a metric. Let's say, I don't know, Citrix IMA networking, bytes sent and received. When our total bytes sent and received, uh, uh, we want to see information about the total bytes sent and received for this particular server. This will create the metric and assign it to that presentation server. You'll see that the box has popped up here that asks if we want to configure new metric properties. We can click yes, and we can say, okay, when something occurs, let's say there's a, a, a certain threshold amount of data that needs to go in and out of that server. When a certain amount of threshold data goes in and out of that server, we want to set that for a yellow indicator. When it goes even higher, we can say a, a red indicator. I don't necessarily know what a good amount of bytes sent and received are for the IMA networking, but let's say if it goes over, I don't know, four, and, and it's a yellow, and if it goes over 10, then that becomes a red. This is the, the, the basis of how we create alerts. You'll see over here that we can set time, and this says if, a, if this particular condition exists for a greater number of, of minutes or hours, then we go ahead and send the alert. This is to prevent us from every time it pops over four, we get an email. It pops under and it pops over and it pops under. If it pops over four for a, an hour, then we know that there's a problem. Or if it pops over red for more than five minutes, then we know there's a problem. We can set the alert configuration. We can, we can email whenever it goes up to yellow or up to red. And again, whenever it goes down to yellow or down to green. We can also configure scripts. If a particular service or, 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 or thing that we're looking to, to, to view goes too red, then we can run a script that does something else. Maybe if the uh, IMA networking bytes received goes to zero, we can run a script to restart the IMA networking service. So there's a lot of different options we can choose for what we want to do whenever that situation occurs. When we click OK, we can see that now we have this new IMA networking bytes received counter that's available for CTX Nugget 1. Now the last component of Resource Manager I want to show you is here within the Access Suite console. We haven't talked a lot about the Access Suite console yet because we haven't needed to, but there is an important component of Resource Manager that's available through here. The Access Suite console has a lot of different functionality. It provides you sort of this overarching view of all of your Citrix components that are inside of your environment, your, your web interface, your secure gateway, your presentation servers, everything. But specific is this report center here. This is your dashboard, if you will, of available reports that you can create for all of the servers inside of your farm. To create a report, you actually will generate a specification. This is the link here. Let's go ahead and create a specification now. A box pops up that allows us to choose the settings for our specification. And it's, it's kind of constrained to see here in this window, but, uh, but bear with me here. 
There are a number of canned report types that are available for this specification. We can create our own if we want, but for our purposes, let's choose one of these canned reports. For example, let's, uh, let's look at this server snapshot report just to get a, a snapshot of what's going on, on inside our server. So we choose a server snapshot report, and we click the next button down here, and we say, what server do we want to actually choose to view this snapshot report for? In this case, let's just choose CTX Nugget 1, and we can also choose a time at which the report is generated. We can use a fixed time, we can say uh, this report time will occur for this amount of time, or we can say at the time in which the report is generated. Now, if we're going to use this report later, it's probably appropriate for us to choose at the, rep at the time in which the report is generated, because we're creating an object that later on we can invoke to generate a different report. I'm going to click Next here, and we can either store the report for later viewing if we want, or we can actually publish the report to a file. Now, this is an interesting part. If we click the Publish Report, we get the option of choosing whether we want an HTML or we want a commerce separated values report. I'm going to choose HTML because they're easier to read, and we can copy report to a folder, or we can even mail ourselves the report if we want, so that at any point in time, we can say, okay, we want to get this report in our inbox to know how the health of our Citrix servers is doing. Later on, you'll see we can schedule this report to occur uh, say on a weekly basis, or a monthly basis, or even a daily basis. I'm just going to copy the report to a folder, and we're going to overwrite the rep that report. I'm going to copy it to the desktop, and I'm going to give it a subfolder called our report. You'll see that it's located here. We get, click Next, and we have to give it a specification name. It's, uh, what was that, a server snapshot specification? And we click Next, and we're finished. Down here in the bottom, it says, after selecting Finish, do you want to run a job based on this new specification? We do, actually, because we, we don't actually create a report by do, creating a specification. We just create the parameters of a report. By clicking this button down here, we're going to use the parameters that we just created and use that to generate a report. So I click Finish, and you'll see now that this, this snapshot report that we've requested, we're now in the Jobs menu. And we'll see here in the Jobs menu that this report is currently running. The Access Suite console is pulling information about our report, and now it's completed, and putting it into that text file. If I minimize the windows here, you'll see that I now have our report, this folder. And if I double-click on our report, you'll see this report.html file. This is the actual report that was created. This is the snapshot report. These are the processes using over 5% of the CPU, and there were none. And these are the users and the processes currently on that system. None were recorded. And these are the metrics currently being pulled by that server. This is the report of which I'm interested in. If I close this down and go back to the Access Suite console, we can change our display to look at uh, jobs. Oh, we're here, already here on jobs, actually. We, uh, we can actually create new jobs if we want from here within this location. A second ago, I told you that creating a specification only creates the, the object with which we can invoke later on to create the report. If we want to create a new job, we click the Schedule Report tab, and we can schedule that job to occur at a different time. Let's say we want to use this specification that we just created, this server snapshot specification, and we want to give it a scheduled runtime. We click Define, and we say, OK, let's give it a new task. We'll run it at 9 AM every day. And we'll give it a password. So each password, each schedule has a password. This is our logon password to the machine running report center. And we give it a name and description. Run the reports. And we get the summary. And now every day at 9 o'clock, this object that we created is actually going to run, and a new report will get pushed to our desktop. Now, my last topic for Resource Manager is actually pretty critical for estimating the amount of size that your Resource Manager database is going to consume. And this is, this is the estimated number of bytes per, per captured event inside of Resource Manager. For every process that you capture, there's 140 bytes per process per session. For server metrics, it's 100 bytes per metric per hour. For, for sessions, it's 100 bytes per session. For, for app metrics, it's 100 bytes per metric per hour. And for events, which are usually classified as reboots, it's 20 bytes per event. Now, this sounds like a really small amount of data. 
But if you think about it, if you've got, let's say, let's say you have 600 sessions on your Citrix server, and, and each session runs, oh, let's say each session runs six processes. Well, then you're going to have something on the order of 140 times 6 times 600, which is something on the order of 500,000 bytes per server per day, just to calculate what this process information is. If, you've, if you're trying to get metrics on your servers, let's say you have uh, 15 metrics per server at, uh, at 100 bytes per metric, and each hour you've got 24 hours of the day, you've got 36,000 bytes just to capture these server metrics. So there's a pretty large amount of data that can actually get captured on a daily basis, you know, 40, 50, 60 megabytes per day to run your Citrix server farm. So you, whenever you configure or, 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 or spec the amount of data space that you're going to need in order to support your Citrix uh, resource manager, be aware of these, these numbers and have a good idea so that you don't end up filling up your data space before you're ready. So what have we talked about today? We've talked about resource manager. We, we discussed the resource manager summary database. We talked about how to do real-time monitoring, and we also created some historical reports. We also created some of those really neat billing reports and how we can go and back bill our domain admins when they've made too much use of our Citrix servers. We've talked about alerting and how we can create additional metrics associated with alerting. We've also talked about when we want to alert the different methods that we can use to alert ourselves, whether that be SMS messages or SNMP traps or, or emails. We talked about the Access Suite console and the reporting center and the dashboards inside of the Access Suite console that are available to us. And then we did a very short uh, amount of information on uh, calculating the summary database size, which will be very critical when you come to move this into production. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.